Esther chapter 8. On that day, the king has to hers give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, unto Esther the queen. All right, so Haman's hung on a gallows. His entire house is turned over to his enemy, the Jews. One day after the tribulation, the millennium, the land is given over to the Jews. After, well, here in Esther, Haman dies. He's hung. But in the, in the millennium, Satan is bound up, chained for a thousand years. And Mordecai came before the, queen, before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. So, Haman's killed. The king now knows that Esther's a Jew. You didn't know that before. Mordecai comes in because it's, it's remembered what he did to the king. Esther speaks to the king and says, Mordecai, this is my uncle. He adopted me, took care of me after my family died. We're kin. The king never knew that. Now, the two Jews in the story, one who sat at the king's gate, one who was in the palace, now both of them are in the palace before the king. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman. So Haman still held that ring the whole time. And gave it to Mordecai. Oh. He gave it to Haman and all this trouble was rose. And now he just takes the, the ring and hands it to somebody else. I mean, we know who Mordecai is, but does the king know who Mordecai is? He's kind of giving the ring out here to me. And this is my thinking, you know, he just, he's just handed it out. It's supposed to be something important. This is the key to the city that they say in America. This is, you have an authority. Imagine the President of the United States giving authority to the departments of, of the branches of the government and people who are against it, people who don't, who don't want this country, who are against this country. Or he just hands, he just hands out authority to people he don't know. And Esther sent Mordecai over the house of Haman. So what was given to her is given to Mordecai. Now, if you can find what Mordecai is, this one guy in the tribulation and then the millennium, be very interesting. Because here's a guy that goes through the whole entire thing of Haman, the Antichrist. He survives when the Antichrist is put away. And now he's an authority. By the queen and by the king. I have no idea where you can where that's pressed. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears, to put away the mischief that Haman the Agite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Satan is, is put away. The Antichrist is killed. But the law is still in action. And it's got to be stopped because the, t the clock is ticking. And now... The entire kingdom knows that Mordecai and Esther are Jews. They are part of the law now. They can be killed. Then the king held out the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther rose and stood before the king. So he must be on the throne. And said, if it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight... And the, thing, and the thing seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes. 
Let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamaditha, the Haggai, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Well, there's something kind of uh, weird here, because we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ outside of nothing we do. Our salvation relies totally on Jesus. If God were to if God were to stand there at the pearly gates like they say Peter does and say, "Listen, why should I let you in? Your the blood of your son, Acts twenty twenty eight, your blood, God. Okay, go in. Here is the queen, Queen Esther, in her royalness, before the king, placing herself as a petitioner." For her people. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come upon my people? Well, not just not just your people, but you, the Jew too. I mean, if you've got to wait for the king to hold out the golden scepter, like the law says, the law says, Jews, you will die also. We have seen through the book of Esther that the queen is not exempt from the law. But she don't care about herself. She cares about the people. But she's also in trouble. And Mordecai. And she's not even thinking about that. Then the king has her said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew. Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. And also, you know, went upon the, the, the bed of Esther when the king came in angry. But the plot was against the Jews. You know, of all the sins that Satan has done, he's been against every man in the world. He's been against God and the angels in heaven. But there's only one really particular sin that's going to stand out of Satan at the great white throne judgment. Since Abram, and I'm talking about the Jewish race of people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's trying to destroy those people over and over and over and over. If Satan spoke to Adolf Hitler about killing those Jews, I know he did, Satan will be charged with all the murders. Write ye also for the Jews, in the law, write, as it liketh you, if it pleases you, if you like it. I mean, so what do you got today, the next thing to it? You got Facebook, I like it. You got to follow King James Bible, if it liketh you. In the king's name, as a hers, or God the Father, Jehovah, I am, and seal it with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Well, that's not said. Now, let me see. I got a note here, 119. Before I open up my big mouth, let me check. All right, 119, when he makes the law about the husbands to be honored in, in their houses by their wives, that was sealed, that it could not be altered. When Haman signs this, this law in the B about killing the Jews, it is not recorded like it was in 119, like it is here, that no man may reverse it. Well, isn't that great how God did that? 
it looks like maybe possibly when when Haman did that law, the king gave him permission, but the king didn't authorize the law. I don't know how to explain that. I don't, the law of the Medes and Persians were, once it was a law, you could not stop it. You would have to come up with a, with a law that completely counterreacts it. But see, in America today, you got a law in the books. Like, at one point in time, it was even considered by the Supreme Court. Income taxes or federal taxes were, were unlawful or unconstitutional. But well, if you go through a, a procedures and steps, you can change the law. It's against the law to go drinking while intoxicated. But if you go through a loophole and get a lawyer, he can get you off. Even though it's a law. And it's sickening that you can see a billboard advertising, you know, you, you got caught DUI, we'll get you off. That did not happen here. And you cannot read America into the Bible. The law is on the books that we read that every wife is to give honor to her husband. If she didn't do that, we don't ever, we don't read what the penalization is, but you better believe it was law and all the women were to obey. May no, may no man reverse. You can't change the law. And Americans today don't know what, you know, if I go to the ACLU, if I go to the CLA, if I go get a lawyer, not back then you couldn't. The Bible says where there's word of a king, there's power. You know, much, you know what kind of power? You lose your neck. We're told by Nehemiah, you couldn't even walk in, the, you couldn't be in the king's presence sad. And there's no what is. I mean, you can't say, well, what if my, my family, what if my daughter was killed today in a camel accident? You still want that king happy. That's how it was back then. Then were the king's scribes called. At the time in the third month, third month, that is the month seven. On the three and thirty, in the three and twentieth day thereof, twenty-third of seven, and it was written. The scribes write it. The scribes did not write Haman's law. I believe this. If you go back to chapter one, I believe there were scribes or the chamberlains or those that are under the king wrote that law. So there was something about Haman's law that it was official, but it wasn't official. But this one's official. The king calls everybody in. Everyone that the lawmakers of his kingdom. All right, everyone step in and we're, we're going to do this. And it was written according to that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and to the deputies and rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, 120 and 7 provinces. Unto every province, according to the writing thereof, the law, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. This law is going to be King uh, Asahari's kingdom, everyone that speaks whatever language they speak, and to all the people. This law is going to be written in all their languages, it's going to be published, and it's going to be proclaimed. What Mordecai proclaims, sealed and signed by the king and his scribes. And he wrote in the king Asahurus' name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by the post, but mailman, on horseback. So you thought the Pony Express was something known. Americans are so stupid to say the Pony Express, but it was on horseback. Actually, I think they, anything they could find, I think it was. The primary was on horseback. Americans don't even know what a horse is. And riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries. That's a that's like a faster camel. Well, there's your Pony Express right there, using any animal they can find. Don't tell me the Pony Express was the first time. 
Come on. Get out of it. Lewis and Clark, we went over. No, there were, there were other Native Americans that went all the way to California that wasn't California yet. Listen, the Mexicans were running around America without the green cards before the Europeans showed up. Why are we getting mad at the Mexicans? They've been here longer than we were. We stole their jobs. We stole the Indians' land. And then we have the nerve to say that this is God's nation. Uh, you're a fool. Wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together and stand for their life. To destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish. A complete reversal of what Haman wanted. Haman said these words about the Jews, and, and the king says, All right, you Jews, you have a right to defend yourself. Life, liberty, or pursuit of uh, justice. And this is the king saying it. All the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and, and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. He's, he's got a war, a battle. He's, he, he's, he's putting the thing right. He's saying the, the people of Haman who want to kill the Jews versus the people of the kingdom now who are going to defend themselves. Haman told them to go kill the Jews. The king's telling the Jews, go protect yourselves. The Civil War wasn't brand new. I don't know what you call kind of war this is. It ain't a civil war, but it's a battle. And a battle of good versus evil. The United Nations against the Jews. But the king is for the Jews. Upon one day in all the provinces of the king Asahurus, namely upon the 30th, 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar. All right, so we, were, we had another date here before. You can go back and look at The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. All right, there's a point in the day that the Jews can attack. It's a hunt, it's an open hunting season, and you don't need a license. On such and such date, you can begin to protect yourselves. Well, there's also on that date with no hunting license needed, those who are going to go after the Jews. Now, if you want, if you want the scenario, is picture a hunter. He, he's been given permission by the government to go to go shoot the deers. Problem is, the deers have gone to their republic and they've been given guns and they're given the date where they can go shoot the hunters too. That's the story. You have the right to, you know, the bear arms. Well, now the bears have arms. And they're going to fire back. And these people, they want to kill the Jews, but guess what? The Jews can fire back. Where Naaman's law, Naaman's proclamation was the Jews couldn't defend themselves. King Azahurus gives the Jews any and all power, anything they could, they need to help them out. I mean, there there is no rules for the Jews. Today, when you go to war, and if there's a war possible, you go by the Geneva Convention, I think that's what it's called. Believe it or not, there's actually rules for a war. The Jews don't have any. They can do anything they want and anything they want. And any way they want, the king has given permission. Now, if you don't know Jews, if you don't know the Orient people, if you give them a free license to be vicious, they will. That little nation called Israel today, since 1942, has kicked some massive butt. Ever since Abram, 
That nation has kicked some butt. And they're still around. King Azahara's, his people and all that, they're gone. They're, they've been long gone. But the Jews are still around. So the bulls that rode upon mules and camels went out. Being hastened and being hasted. You just picture a guy riding a mule being, come on, come on. I mean, he's the last one to show up to the towns. I, I've heard people say the most funniest thing. I mean, if you ever want to watch baseball, it's boring. I, I, I've heard you watch a bunch of donkeys playing baseball. You know, I mean, the donkeys aren't playing baseball. And the people riding on the donkey. And they play baseball. And he says, it's a funny thing. When you try, you know, you hit the ball, you got one guy trying to take his donkey to the plate. And the donkey don't want to go. Well, meanwhile, the guy out in the outfield trying to get his donkey over here to get the ball, and the donkey don't want to go. And I've heard his absolute. I wish I, I'd pay to go see something like that. That's comical. You know, you, you want the donkey to go, and he just pops his butt right down. They're stubborn. And camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment. So the king. So the king, you think nothing's new. The king sent priority mail even before we deliver for you. Priority mail shows up in the Bible. Deliver next day or your money back. If you didn't, if you didn't deliver the next day, it wasn't money back, it was your head was lost or whatever the king's punishment was. Next day delivery. That's in the Bible. That wasn't something some bankrupt organization came up with. And the decree was given at Shushan or Shushan the palace. That's the capital. That's important. That'd be like Washington, D.C. in America. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white. Gee, he already done that. So put in Mordecai, Haman, a providential God, the people are already prepared to see Mordecai dressed up as the king. Last time we saw Mordecai, he was in sackcloth and ashes. Ashes. Now he's in a royal. A great crown of gold. Well, it said over here, the king's, it was just a royal crown. Um, it said the royal crown which is set upon his head. Well, this said a great crown of gold. I lost where I am. A great crown of gold with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. What's that? That's going to be the Jews in the millennium with Lord Jesus Christ. Mordecai just became a type of Christ. He's a ruler in Shushan. Shushan. Second to the king. Remember Joseph? He was the second in all Egypt. Everybody came to him for the needs. Somewhere along the line, if you study Mordecai, he becomes... Now, I'm not going to say Jesus Christ is in the tribulation now. But look where Mordecai is now. And there's something that comes to my head that... that I don't want to say weird babies. I don't want you to think he's got five arms or fingers sticking out of his head. But that, that baby, that, that son that's born to Israel, in Revelation chapter 12, everyone says that's Jesus, and it's not. And then the woman you know, has a place prepared for her, and Satan swallows up the Jordan River and tries to drown her out. That baby that's born, that, that son, maybe that's Mordecai is a type of there. Because that child is not Jesus Christ.
And the Jews had light. Well, they had light in John chapter 1, but they refused the light, John chapter 3, for, the, for the deeds and all that were wicked. And they enjoyed to do wrong. They enjoyed their sins, Romans chapter 1. They rather put the light out on Calvary's cross and kill his prophets, Acts chapter 7. Now the Messiah is here. Now it's the millennium. Now it's the light. Now is the city on the, on, the, on the hill. Now all the nations are flocking to Jesus Christ. Now, you know, with, with the 12, 12 disciples sitting around Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ King in the millennium with David on his throne and all the Christians that suffered during his reign reigning in all over the world. Now you've got the setup. And somebody like Mordecai is walking around I don't know what. I don't know who Mordecai is. As comes the tribulation in the millennium. Joy and honor. Only time the Jews are going to have light, gladness, joy, and honor is in the millennium and in eternity. They don't have light today in Jerusalem. They got a bunch of Roman Catholics, they got a bunch of uh, uh, Pentecostals, they got a bunch of Baptists, they got a whole bunch of people running around there and telling false stories of the life of Jesus. That's not so. Would you like to go to the Holy Land? Where is it? Jerusalem. Ha! That's holy? You mean with a bunch of people running around, don't know where they, which way the tag belongs on their shirt? That's holy? You mean telling me that Jesus Christ died right here inside the city? That's holy? That perverts scripture. No, thank you. Now, if you want me to go to the holy city, New Jerusalem, let me pray to God and ask for the rapture to happen. Then you're going to have to wait seven years and then a thousand seven years before you see New Jerusalem because you got the tribulation, you got the thousand year reign, then comes New Jerusalem. Only after you get everybody judged at the great white throne judgment. Then you get the holy city. By the way, you don't get the holy city. Until every man has been judged and cast in the lake of fire that belong there. Then the holy city shows up. You ain't going to have the holy city even tampered, even thought of tampering with a weak, wicked, Christ rejecting gladness. They ain't, they ain't happy today. Joy. There is no joy to the Jew. God says there is no peace to the wicked. And they're wicked right now. Even though they're God's people. As a, as a corporation of Jews, they're wicked because they crucified their Messiah. That's wicked. They said, let, their, let his blood be upon us and our children. And honor. Honor for the Jew. He, he's the number one of jokes. Have a Jew walk into the United Nations and, and demand that he gets the time. Allow the Jew to launch missiles over to someone who's attacking him and watch the, the television uh, program. All oh, the Jews struck a hospital. All the children. Oh my Lord. And all the people. Look at the. And you know, you know, the real pictures or not. Pictures from someone else. But meanwhile, the enemy's been launching and launching and launching and launching. And nothing about the Jews. And in every province. And in every city. Whether, whether so the king's commandment and his decree came. The Jews had joy and gladness. A feast and good day. Now that's the millennium. That's all over. That's worldwide. That is worldwide. More so in Israel and in Jerusalem. And many of the people of the land became Jews. Oh, look at that. You mean what Isaiah, what Jeremiah, when they say when the nations will come and say, let, you know, let us follow you because you, you're, you belong to the God? Let us become the, the people of God. I mean, let us be a Jew. Millennium, Ezekiel. 
You think I've been saying the tribulation and the millennium? You think I've just been saying that just to blow hot air in the air? No. Scriptures say it. The people who are going to see the Jew as the people of God in the millennium, they're going to say, I want to be just like you. You know, that's what a Christian's supposed to do today, that they failed. They're supposed to look at you in your life and say, you know what? You're weird. You got the same problems I, I got. You got the same job I got. You got the same thing I got, but you're more happier than I am. What is your problem? What wacky tobacco are you smoking? What pills are you taking? Right here. I take the 1611. That's what I take. I don't smoke no wacky tobacco. I don't take no pills. God is my peace. God is my joy. Now, they may not believe you today, but they ought to know. I mean, I don't believe, you know, I let my life live. You're the only Bible that people read. I don't believe that, but it's true. Problem is, you're the only Bible that some people... you got to tell them you're a Christian, first of all. They're not going to guess it. You're a fruitcake. That's what you are. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. <laughs> Now, it's not the fear of Jesus Christ when he tells you to go jump in the lake. is the Jews are armed. Here. And they have a right and they have an order by the law to protect themselves. I, okay. <laughs> Hi. You know, somebody's coming walking down the street, you know. I'm a Jew. I'm, I'm protected. Completely opposite of Adolf Hitler. And they would put a mark on them, a star. And you were marked and you were knew who you were. That was not the time to say you were a Jew, like I said before. That was the time when a lot of Jews changed their names. Even coming to the Asylum of America, they changed their names. Because they believed that there were agents here of the SS, of the, the, the Nazi ram, that they were looking for Jews to carry them back. So they would change their names. But here, people are saying, listen, I'm Jewish. I'm of Abraham, Isaac. What was the other one's name? Oh, yeah, Jacob. I'm of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what I'm of. I'm a Jew. Guy could be white as, white as a, a, a Greek and still say, I'm Jewish. Because they feared the Jews. There ain't no fear of the Jews today. Unless you're in the banking industry, but that's it. So we'll leave them like that. They got joy. They got peace. And the king is protecting them. And Esther and Mordecai are now in, in you know, the, their prince has come home. Some kind of Disney movie and all that. The law has been signed. We'll leave, good, good spot to leave that off now.